All right, picks to picks. So again, I talk about this one just because I think it's helpful to understand the model, but I wouldn't necessarily like say like, let's go and build these. This is the hardest one to build. Like I would generally deter, I would deter you from using picks to picks in this class. Um, what it does. So I use some big words here. I use generalized as correlations between two pairs of images. Uh, and what all that means is it figures out how to, how to translate one image to the other. Um, and you might hear me talk about generalizations because the whole idea of machine learning is to generalize a model. Um, what that means is that it doesn't always cover every single use case or edge case of, an, of the, the data set it sees, but it tries to sort of average or find a, a model that statistically represents most of the data. Um, so again, there's a GitHub repo, there's a relevant paper. Um, the training data for this is a folder of images that we would call A, and then a, a folder of directly correlated images called B. I think it's easier to look at, at actual examples to understand this. So this is the, the facades model that, is in, that comes with picks to picks. Um, it's probably one of the more commonly known picks to picks models. And what you'll see here is that on the left, you have a photo of a, of a, of a building. And on the right, you have um, a color-coded semantic, what is called a semantic labeling, or a semantic map of how these things relate to each other, right? So again, the dark blue or like the, the darker blue is all like background of a building. Um, this orange color looks like it's sort of like this decoration. Um, windows are light blue. Um, so there's different color codings for different pieces. What I think is really interesting about this model, <clears throat> and we'll talk about this more as we get through data sets, is that look at how these are kind of weirdly cropped, right? So like the full image isn't perfectly represented here. Um, and it's interesting that we can still represent, against, like we can still train a model and it does pretty good. Um, but you'll see these two are really tightly connected, right? It's like you could overlay them one on top of the other and you would see how they match up. And then when you're actually testing a model is you give it one image. So in this case, we might give it a new version of the semantic labeling map and we would get out a different, we would get out a realistic photo of a building um, or we could do the reverse. The other thing is we could give it a, uh, a new photo of a building it's never seen and it would spit out a different semantic map. Um, so what's nice about these models is you can get A or B depending on what you feed it. Um, so in that case, you could kind of like create new semantic labeling maps that maybe you do something else with, or you could create new, new buildings that have never been seen before. Um, so here's another example. This is like a street view and then a color coded like labeling of how those work, right? So the blue is um, this, uh, like, I guess this is probably like Venice or some other city in Italy. And the blue represents water and then the red represents buildings and the white represents like essentially other street or like other city background, I guess. Um, and then this is by Gene Kogan and some of his students. They then like color code in like a weird shape or another thing. And then it spits out a pseudo realistic image. Um, so this is like, this model probably already exists for you. It's already been trained to do this. And then you're just testing it with this. Um, so it's like pretty reasonable if you wanna like recreate new buildings, um, you could do that tomorrow using the model that already exists. But if you have a new thing that's like color coding some other thing that we've never trained it on, making the data set for this might be kind of annoying.